welcome to episode 50. Five zero, Junior. 50. That's impressive, dude. Ah, oh, unbelievable. You know what I want there, Junior, to celebrate the 50th? Uh, what was it, a float plane or a cabin? I want a GoPro. <laughs> a GoPro. A GoPro. Yeah. Sounds like a good plan. Yep, I heard the GoPro is better than the GoPro. Oh, yes, it's the premium model for sure. Yep, I agree. So, 50 shows, you guys, That's on the A Travel. It's unbelievable. That's a, a talk show broadcast live every Tuesday. We've been doing this every Tuesday since the beginning of COVID on March 2020 in that area. And we do it every night, every Tuesday, 7 p.m. from our base camp. Somewhere is here in beautiful Maple Leaf, Canada. Who would have believed we'd be at the episode 50? I know. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Every week. Yep. Yep. So we have some pretty wicked guests tonight. We wanted them on this show for like ever, man. I mean, these brothers are unreal. So tonight, our special guests on the A Travel Talk Show are the Brothers of Tourism Call. Yeah, I can't wait to hear what they have to say. It's going to be some great adventures and yep. uh, uh, tourism uh, things that have happened. These guys are a hoot. They're so yeah. smart. They're so fun. <laughs> They're so knowledgeable yeah. about the Canadian tourism industry. I mean, these guys are just amazing. They got the best show. I mean, I, I, would, miss, I would not miss an episode. I And I like the younger brother myself. Oh, well, yeah, I kind of I kind of prefer him to. I think he's cooler. <laughs> I did. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I, uh, you know, I think my older brother is like I, I, I totally I worship my older brother. He's like my, wow. my idol. So, but, hey, the Brothers of Tourism, this is the first AMA attempted an AMA episode. And for all you newbies, AMA in the online talk show world means ask me anything. <laughs> that's pretty scary right that is scary and uh you know we'll see what happens it's all off the cuff so uh yep 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 we received a, a good number of questions from all over the world uh to ask these crazy conducts of tourism some some detailed stuff and uh people really wanted to get inside of their heads eh i mean some of these questions are were pretty bizarre so oh, I can't wait to hear what the answers are. I mean, uh, to yep. get through the ringers. Uh huh. Unfortunately, These we cannot. Ask, unfortunately, we cannot ask all the questions tonight. This is only an hour show, so we had to make some tough decisions. Uh, which questions to ask? These collectors of bumps and bruises and poutine pounding brothers. It was a tough decision to figure out. Excited! I'm so excited to have these brothers of tourism on the show tonight, Junior. So let me tell you a little bit about these two uh, adventure travel, sustainable tourism, and small town community advocates. Colin, who is a younger brother, who you will meet in a few seconds, started with a one little community website on Vancouver Island, BC, Canada, Sydney, BC. Yes. Greg joined up later in the in later years. Then they embarked on a 10-year study of tourism in small towns, crisscrossing Canada from ocean to ocean to ocean, and as some people here in Canuckland say, coast to coast to coast. They started in tents, and then they moved up to Jeeps, and then they used pull trailers, and now they have a pretty nifty 32-foot motorhome they call the Maple Leaf Bomber. That's quite the story, quite the uh, yep, you know, life uh, story they've partaken. I can't wait. About yep. three years ago, they returned, and now they're growing on award winning national adventure travel website, blog, and talk show. Listen to these accolades there, junior of these two cats, top 100 global power influencers 2021. Best Canadian Adventure Vacation Planner 2021. Best Nationwide Adventure Travel Company 2020. Rank 23. Top 1,000 Global Travel Blogs in 2020. Top 20 Canadian Travel Website to Watch in 2019. And rank number 7. Top 60 Travel Blogs in Canada 2019. It's a pretty good resume for a bunch of punks. That's an impressive resume. We're lucky that they took some time to come on our show. Yep. Then here's what here's the deal. Then they uh, they worked on helping small town tourism and economic development. These two cats, brothers of innovation, created and designed a small town and rural community authentic content marketing 
program and training system called Experience Community. And guess this out. They implemented this content marketing program for the first time in the Nickel Valley in the interior of British Columbia, Canada, with a forward thinking group called Tourism Nickel Valley. These cats saw something. They knew they had to do some changes. They saw that tourism was changing. So two years later, the world took notice of this program and it's called Experience Nickel Valley. It's here in Merritt and I highly suggest you check it out. The program was first featured on some online shows in Australia, United Kingdom and USA. Then the program was featured as a top community program in BC Business Magazine 2020. 2021, they won the, this program won the Canada Prestige Award for a marketing program of the year. This all happened in March. They just won that. And again, congratulations to the community of Merritt and the Nickel Valley, because yes. in 2021, one month ago, they won the BC Economic Development Association Best Community Project Award under 20,000 population. Yes. Way to go, Nicola Valley. Yeah. So tonight's show, we asked you, <laughs> our friends, followers, and clients to send in some questions for these Brothers of Tourism dudes to answer since we are celebrating 50th show. I believe the A Travel Marketing Group, Colin, is picking us up for another 50 shows. No way. That's impressive. I, I believe right so. Uh, right we're in the, Good news. You know, our lawyers are, you know, talking to their lawyers and, and mm -hmm. our accountants are talking to their accountants. And, you know, we're, we're, yeah. we're swinging a deal here to see if we can uh, hit the big uh, decade mark on shows. That's, that would be pretty cool. Oof, that'll be very cool. Yep. Yep. So this show is live. So stuff happens. If uh, if we lose you, or if our guests, which we're going to bring on in a sec, lose you, then uh, hold on. Don't change the channel. We will be right back. So let us introduce you to the brothers of tourism. And I'd like to make sure we give a big round of applause as we introduce Greg and Colin Gerard, the A Travel and the A Marketing Group. So welcome to the show. Call it a Greg. Yeah. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> right on. Nice to be here. That was a great here. intro they gave us, eh? Yeah, that was a pretty, thanks guys. Yeah, you gave us yeah, a great thanks intro. A thanks, thanks. <laughs> That's awesome. We'll give you that 20 bucks. Just watch for it in the mail. Uh-huh. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Be, uh, alternative ego. Yeah. On now. Yeah. So that was fun. Anyways, we just decided we're going to introduce ourselves and, and play that role. And I thought that was a nice little take there, Junior. I thought it went over well. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was blushing the whole way. So we all know why everyone's watching now. And we all know why everyone's going to be watching in the next days in a week is uh, we got some questions here came from all around the world uh, asking us a whole bunch of different questions. Um, some of them who follow us regularly really know where to ask. Um, they hit it on the nose and then we have some special guest questions. So I think we should get right to it there. Call maybe I will start uh, I'll throw the first one at you and uh, and then I'll follow you up with it. What do you think about that? Well, you forgot to introduce yourselves. We just did for the first 15 wow. minutes. Yeah, I guess so. Eh? Sounds I mean, good. Bring on the first question there. There bro. you go. I mean, I don't want to double introduce. We want to start. <laughs> over. Put your hand up if you want to rewind. Yeah, uh, for sure. Ain't happening. Yeah. Okay, question number one. This came from a regular viewer on our website who, who contributes uh, to the community feed. His name is Joey Canadian. So I don't exactly, he's a sort of an undercover type dude, but he has some pretty good content that he puts up. So he starts the show <clears throat> with a really nice opening question. Why did you both leave your corporate jobs for a chance to chase your dreams in the adventure travel industry? Junior, what do you think? Well, I think that's a great question uh, posted by Joey. Yep. And, uh, I mean, it's a number of things which led up to that. I mean, at the, we are at the point where we need to expand the company and uh, we need to research our own information on Canada. And we were just uh, decided that we were wanted the adventure life to get on the road. We both love to travel. Um, I was missing the road. I lived in Jasper th for three years. And uh, I got the adventure bug there and the outdoor bug yeah. there. So yeah. had to get on the road and just uh, go for it. Yeah. Just 
experience life at its fullest and uh, go for the dream uh my story's a little bit different but we ended up in the same spot we both like to travel and we both love adventure and uh, i i really enjoy hanging out with my brother best friend best buddy uh, but my little story i was a suit and tie guy i used to walk around with suits carry a briefcase go to corporate meetings travel a lot and i look around the table one day and i said i don't want to be like that when i get older and have ulcers divorces uh, look sickly and not be very happy with life um i decided that i wanted uh quantity more than quality so i broke ties and i uh, came back here and i hooked up with junior and uh from there on in uh the story will uh, i'm sure we'll touch here and there on it the rest of the night but thanks for that question mr uh, joey canadian and if you do want to follow joey Check out acantravel.com and the community feed, and he's often there. Best uh, best thing you ever did was uh, quitting and coming back. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean I'm so much happier. It's been such a yeah, it's such a wild adventure. Like two of us as opposed to one makes yep. all the difference. And you have your, I mean, the things you learned in your um, corporate life, the yep. lessons you learned, and the skills you learned. Are just invaluable for for your end of the company and it, it shows and yep. things no. i know for my end and um exactly it's a pretty team. good it's a pretty good partnership when you got the tech guy and then you got the the marketing guy and we're both <clears> bringing <throat> skills in that the other guy i mean we're both in tune but i mean it's a nice thing i and i yep. and i don't uh, my corporate world the suit and tie world uh the one thing i do owe that world is a lot of skills uh because street smarts outweighs book smarts book smarts gets you on street smarts teach you how to survive and uh i thought that was very interesting number two call this is from isabella and i hope i say this right isabella uh brambilia brambilia or brambilla i read your book Sounds italian i i uh -huh, very i read you both I, I read you i read that you both took 10 years <laughs> to travel canada one way and three days to travel back first mm -hmm. off that is amazing and crazy i mm -hmm. would like to know what were the highlights of your trip researching canada and why go to awesome question me too as well okay um i mean the the amazing things that happen our 10-year adventure are numerous i mean from it's hard to pick out certain highlights. I mean, we had the high to Gwai, living in the cabin there, the Buffalo and Northwest Territories, icebergs in Newfoundland, the history. A lot of it was the history and the education we learned about Canada. Oh. So much, so much I didn't know before we left. I mean, from from island ferries everywhere to First Nations culture to to Hutterites to Acadians to I mean the education is amazing. But I mean, you can go on and on, but the main, I was thinking about this, the main highlight for me is just every day. I mean, waking up in the morning with the sun, going outside and enjoying the coffee beside a lake, a river, a mountain, listening to the birds, the wilderness, uh, the fresh air. I mean, that, you know, every day, not knowing what's going to happen, every day would be a new adventure, going somewhere new or just exploring something new. Yeah. So, I mean, that was a highlight. I mean, the overall trip every day was a highlight. I agree. And I think uh, I think Colin said it really well. It's the whole 10 years that was the highlight. I mean, imagine starting an adventure, taking a risk of a lifetime, starting out in tents and uh, working our way across, eventually getting pool trailers. And well, you, you had a tent. I started the trailer. That's true. Call. How uh, did that work out, anyways? Well, I had, I, like I had to have the office. I'm the the computer guy. Uh, so I had to have the 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 virtual. Oh, well, that just gives you all you viewers. You just you need a good idea tent. of how this relationship works. <laughs> anyways, I would like to know what the highlights of the trip. A lot of them. I think a couple is one I I really enjoy. I'm an avid hiker, so there's a lot of good hiking I like out there. We saw. There's nothing like seeing uh, a part of the country you've never seen before from a mountaintop or in a valley or in a gully or on the ocean. Um, the lighthouses were amazing. The park systems were amazing. The backcountry roads, the small towns pulling into a small town. People in Canada are, are, are beautiful people. And uh, we were luckily, we met a whole bunch of them. And we didn't meet mm -hmm. uh, anyone there. Really, I don't, can't recall any bad situations. So thanks for that question, uh, Isabella. 
The people Brad, are definitely a huge highlight as well. I have to agree with you there. I mean, the people make make the trip. Well, you made Maybe. the trip. Well, we're people, but oh. I mean, the locals really make the you know they they make the trip worthwhile. They make the trip. Um, I don't know, amazing. So they questions. Can or, yep. I guess they can make or break the trip depending on the locals. Excellent. Excellent answer, Junior. You're on. I'm done. What do you see as the outcome? And this comes from a gentleman by the name of Stan Harrison, which we got through through social media. What do you see as the outcome for travel in a post-COVID world? I'm going to tackle this one first, Junior. You're it's uh, like anything with the post-COVID world. Um, it's pretty hard to predict. So I don't think it's a, it's a wise move to predict. But here's what I would suggest that we do, Stan. Uh, to prepare ourselves for the post-COVID world, especially in the tourism industry. One, learn new skills. I've been a big advocate of that. Two, you got to partner up. You got to do your own research. And I think three is you got to take responsibility for your own business. It's that time where you've got to make some tough decisions. And in order to make this, we're going to have new traveler habits, new traveler trends. We're going to have travel destination selections are going to change, how people decide where they're going to go, how they're going to go. Sustainability is going to be a big thing. And uh, and then it's all this phasing in and phasing out and to see who's the last one standing. Um, that's the big one is, are we going to even have enough businesses to service uh, tourism when that onslaught comes? Because when the gates open, it's going to be a big rush. And then we'll see how it all lays out. That's what I think uh, about it, Stan. No predictions. That's too, too iffy right now. But uh, I can't tell you what I would do if I was uh, a tourism business right now. Junior? That is a whole bunch of unknowns listed yep. there coming. And you're perfectly right. I mean, there's in the perfect world what you do. In the perfect world, I could see people getting vaccinated all within the first next few years and um, to beat down COVID by uh, 2022. Whether well, we're not going to have any international tourism till 2025, mm -hmm. I think. I don't even think that's, a, I think domestic's mm -hmm. going to have to buck up. Yeah, I wasn't done. I don't care. <laughs> and that was uh, in a perfect world. Mm. Like, obviously, the whole world has to be vaccinated. And I mean, countries that don't get it done won't be able to travel to ones that do. And uh, it's going to be a whole mess. And like you say, how many tourism businesses are still going to be around? How many restaurants are still going to be around? But I think once it does open up, I think it's going to go nuts. Whether that's two years or five years, I mean, people are already getting crazy, pent up. You know, I just uh, hope we can all um, maintain our mental health until it does get better. You know, keep keep at the battle. Don't give up and um, we'll get through it. Be safe. Be safe. Exactly. So uh, good one. Here, uh, are you still going? No. <laughs> 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 no i'm done okay I'm done now, yeah, yeah that's good that's good i'm I, glad. I was gonna mention before oh, we go yeah, on, yeah, yeah. on the next question our travels across uh Canada. this is uh you know this was your after the tent that's the my tent. rig that's my rig uh, after the tent pity party we had yep this is what you picked that up with the okanagan uh yeah i picked up the trailer in the okanagan and i ran the jeep into the ground that's your rig and these pictures are courtesy of ma way to go ma uh, this is uh up, up there you go that's my rig bigfoot, bigfoot camper and just uh i mean we drove these things everywhere we took them off road up mountain sides through yep. everywhere and Colin tried to run me over many times. Only well in reverse. There you go. Tried to push, <laughs> tried to push. There's so many funny stories of backing out in the back country wilderness yeah. along, a, along a dirt yeah. gravel road with no turnaround. And yeah. the roads, if anyone who does go in the back country, they always seem to narrow, narrow, narrow down, narrow down, narrow down, right? Yeah. Don't like this all the time. All the time we had to back out of that one through the mud just we had to back out like a kilometer with the trailer so yeah. that's when we backed out back turned around and you got pushed into the bush a little 
Yeah, you pushed me into the bush. That's okay. Those yeah. are great. What about the one where you took off from on me and left me at uh, uh, at that lake in Cranbrook for ten days without <laughs> without a vehicle? <laughs> what about that uh, one? No, we bring that one back just because you had a, a transmission issue, ah. and uh, you told me to leave. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll never they were admit gonna call that. you when it was ready. You're gonna yeah. walk into town, get a ride with somebody, yeah. and you're yeah. fine. Except the Cranbrook pulled, Island was a pretty good place to get to get stuck. Except they pulled me three times that it's ready, so I <laughs> hiked. I have to. I have to hitchhike and walk into town. It's 15 yeah. kilometers. I go in, and it wasn't ready. So yeah. then I have to get all the way back. I get a call. I come in. I said, "So you make sure it's ready." So I come in. It's not ready. The guy's yeah. not there. I remember that. Wow. Three times. Yeah. The thing I remember most about Cranbrook Island is waking up all of a sudden and there's cows everywhere. Yeah. Step yeah. out the trailer door and all of a sudden it's. Yeah. it's like, yeah. That was a good time. Okay. Yeah. Ah, number four. I think I have a good idea of your answer. This comes from Thomas Vandersack, who's also a contributor on the ACAN travel community travel feed. Uh, Thomas says, I think I have a good idea of your answer, but others should know. How has the Canadian tourism industry treated you guys, being that you are a private operator in a government-controlled tourism industry led by government-funded tourism associations? That one is definitely for you, bro. Oh. But be kind. Oh. Okay. <laughs> be kind. Uh, good question, Thomas. Um... I can put it this way. We have uh, a lot more cooperation from international tourism um, mm -hmm. out there. We have a lot more communications. We get a lot more brainstorming. We get a lot more ideas, and we got some superb connections uh, around the world. Um, we there's a lot. It's it's a pretty tough one to answer without going negative on it because it. But Matt will tell you a lot right there with that answer. Um, it's a tough. It's a tough grind. Uh, we don't have uh, funding at 52 million, 22 million, 1 million. Uh, we have to grill a market. Uh, we think we have a really great product. We designed an award-winning program and, you know, uh, we don't even get an email uh, back from the government when we email them. So, you know, it's pretty tough, but if we, we, we're actually doing extremely well and uh, we enjoy I mean, everyone will say it. Business is war. Our our competition just happens to be a very, very powerful and well funded competition. Mm -hmm. That's okay. about it. I don't want to go any. I don't really want to go farther with that one. I don't know about you, Call. That's good. Well, I was going to say if it uh, if it wasn't for government tourism, we wouldn't have such a great product. Well, you know, like another... you say, competition drives drives innovation and drives. Yep innovation <laughs> yeah well and i also think too is it, it it was because of how we were treated in uh when we were smaller uh the tourism associations uh four or five of them uh got together and ganged up on us and basically tried to shut us down where we were working at mm -hmm. that time and that move by them actually fueled us to go from being a small vancouver island website to a national yeah, website so we owe them yeah. that to get us so pissed off that yeah. we said, okay, we're going to go make this puppy national. And who are you now? Right. Yeah. Too bad. We don't have uh, I mean, I don't have a picture handy of the uh, Vancouver Island tourism center. We opened. Yeah. With the, uh, the map of Vancouver Island, complete map of Vancouver Island on the, on the front lawn yep. with a path you could walk through, which was Georgia Straits. And then you had the cities and yep. everything was colored mott rocks and uh it was quite uh quite cool they were scared that's when they came at us is when we opened up that info center with the rock yeah. garden the shape of vancouver island we had a mm -hmm. and we had a great location we were going to be the first ones to bring in computers uh we were going to have the first one interactive map um we had it all going and basically uh they got wind of it and they came at mm -hmm. us and actually mm -hmm. They basically, we had clients who told us, they told uh, our clients, if you advertise with them, you're not advertising with us. So mm -hmm. we've had, we got a ton of nasty stories that we could share, but we don't want to go there. So no, just, we'll just leave it at that and say, yep. uh, you know, we're open to work with uh, the government anytime. Yep. I gotcha. Number five. Number, Number five. five. 
Okay, again, just these names. I apologize if I, if I, ain't, if I ain't nailing it. I apologize. This hmm. is from Diego Donovan. Uh, question five. Diego? Diego. Diego. T H I A G O. That's a cool name. I like it. I Diego. like it. Yeah. Diego. Okay. What frustrates <laughs> you the most about being in the travel and tourism hospitality industry? <sighs> they, uh, the most is that, that a lot of tourism businesses are still stuck in the old school tourism mindset. And they're not um, opening their minds and educating themselves properly on the internet and what it can do and where tourism is going. Because um, with our acantravel.com, we're offering, we can give you a free tourism listing for all businesses, no cost, no commissions, no nothing. Yep. Which will send people or hundreds of thousands of, of travel planners per year to their website. They should all be signing on. It doesn't cost anything, but um, oh. I mean, it, it takes an education. Yep. They to, just, to, they just, they them. just, yeah, they're just, bra a lot of uh, tourism has been, you know, going to the same, the same well for 50 years. Yeah. And they're used, it's, it. they're, they're used to it. So that's the mm -hmm. nut we're trying to crack. And I think the other thing that frustrates us more about the travel and tourism, uh, a hospitality industry is, um, the opportunity that when you have something that can really help a community, something that will bring money in or something that will save them and something that will grow them, that doesn't cost uh, a whole whack of money like the urban models that are out there right now. And yet, um, it's again, it's an education process because they, they've they been going to one well for 50 years. And uh, all I can say to all our tourism friends who have been with us for 10 years, you guys rock because you know innovation. You mm -hmm. saw it. Uh, you see it now. Um, I, I we have the best cust clients in the world. We have the best people mm. who advertise us with the world. They've been with us up and down and up, and they're always encouraging. And I love you guys. If you're watching, and every one of you who advertise with us, uh, we love you tremendously, and we love growing your, your your programs with you, and sharing ideas and trying to help you along. And um, yeah, we aren't the the fifty two million dollar year heavily funded outfit. But we are the two brothers that could, and uh, you're not knocking off, not knocking us down. They, we've been bumped and bruised and punched and kicked, and and, and <laughs> I'm sorry. All you've done is motivate us. So now you're stuck with us. Yeah, it just makes it build, us build a better product and work harder to yep. win this uh, game, get our piece of the pie. Yep. So but yeah, we you. owe it all. We owe it all to our to our members and our clients, and yep. um, we wouldn't exactly. be here if it wasn't for you guys. No, we rock. I'm almost tearing up. <laughs> so uh, thanks for that question, Diego. I thought that was a pretty cool and uh, a very well thought out one. So here's a uh, question six. This is from Sally McIntosh. And she says, I own a B&B &B in Manitoba struggling to stay afloat. Uh, well, that's a pretty common one. And, and it's terrible. It's happening all over this country. Why should, and here you go, here you go, Junior sort of leads in. She goes, why should my tourism business register on your website? There you go, Colin. Go for it. Tell her. A lot of what I said before, um, you can't go wrong. We got uh, hundreds of thousands of people traveling, planning travel through our website. And uh, if you're not there, they can't find you. They can't book with you. We believe in uh, not getting involved, not being a third party. We just want to bring you the travelers. They book directly with you. Of course, you usually give them the best rates as opposed to these uh, overseas um, booking sites, which just take a lot of the money out of Canada. Yep. Um, one of the beauties of being on our site is once you have your business on there, you get a profile that's much like uh, Facebook. So you can add um, things that will build the personality of your business. So your profile will show things like, you know, the bird watching you did in the morning or how beautiful your sunset was or, or you know, pictures guests took happy when you're there doing things. So you can really build the personality of your business. And nowadays, that's what people are looking for. They're not looking for the corporate quick fix, book here, get a room. They're looking for an experience. And if they see that your business, your B&B provides that experience, they'll book with you. And um, you can't do that without us. 
Very good point. The other thing I want to say too is all these other websites, all these ones, the booking and the Expedia, 13 to 15% of that commission comes out of that, leaves our country and never comes back. That money used to fuel our school teams that used to put food on the table, mom and pop businesses that used to buy a new uh, roof on the ice rink. Uh, this money we're sending out of the country and it's not, it never comes back. I've never seen a Canadian commercial by booking.com or Expedia. I can tell you that right now. And uh, one of the things that we have to start to realize, and it's just like everything else, they're saying shop local. It's the same thing with, with websites. The other two thing, the other thing you need to also know is these booking sites, one, they don't educate you on your destination. So you're, you don't know if you're going for two days and everyone said this, I wish we could stay three days. I wish we booked four days. Our site is heavily on planning. And so when you can plan everything, hikes, bikes, historic sites, for, and it's always new content because you can sign up and you can start being part of that story and start being part of that experience. And every time you share that, it markets your business. This program is winning awards. Uh, we're just in its infancy. And we invite every tourism business to join us and to join this family of tourism people and to help us grow this beautiful country and, and help us keep tourism on a level foot. But let's do people tourism and let's get away from corporate tourism because travelers are changing. And if we don't decide to change our brand and be more story and experiences and, and be more real with that traveler, we're not we're not going to get them. So that's my little two bits. That's well said, bro. And I wanted to I wanted to mention that uh, you're not just promoting your business, but promoting your community in your area. I mean, yeah. it's not just you alone. You get I mean, if there's 10 15 mere businesses in your community advertising with us for free yep. and um, promoting their area, adding parks, adding little stories, adding photos. Yep. That becomes a huge force of promotion yep. for your community, for your area, which not just helps you, it helps everybody, the restaurants in your town, everybody. Just ask, uh, you know, people in our experience uh, community program. Yep. it's it's It spreads around. It helps everybody. Another interesting point too, if, if if corporations, big business and their CMOs, uh, their corporate marketing uh, officers, if they're going to spend 90% of their dollars on 90% of their marketing budget now that's coming out with some of the white papers on content marketing, that's mm -hmm. what we do. This is content marketing. This is a different way of doing tourism. This is people promoting their communities and in the doing so they're promoting their businesses and that's what works. And that's yeah. why this, that's why we're winning these awards now because it, yeah, it take us a while. This is new stuff. This is new trends and, and we're right on top of it. So, so sign up, man. Don't, don't be silly. <laughs> next, next. And excellent. what, here's what we got. The mom question. Oh, excellent. We got to have a mom All question. All important mom question. And... Yes, yes, yes. So she sent me a whole bunch. So I had to pick one. <laughs> because there's a because there's a lot of questions. So here's the big Ma Ma Gerard question: Our royal queen of our clan, the mother of our tribe, have to represent Ma Gerard tonight. Without a her, Canada, a Canada matriarch. Yeah. Without her, uh, she's our biggest fan. She supports us no matter what. She's always believed in us uh love her to death we both do so here's the mom question however <laughs> i think there's a hidden meaning here call i think there's something here in her question a little bit of a Caveat. meaning that, like uh when are you boys visiting mm, yeah Seems to be She's coming pretty between direct. The lines. yeah so mom asks, <laughs> mom asks what are your plans for future travels okay that's mm -hmm. cool and what do you see happening in uh for your travels in the future say five years you can go first there, Junior. Well, um, as I say, as we said before, I, it's pretty hard to plan five years ahead. Um, in the perfect world, uh, I could see us um, nice little cabin on the lake or forest somewhere as home based office, living out in the wilderness. <laughs> I don't know what kind of we'd have geese. Plane, <laughs> That's a pretty uh, bad impression of a folk. Well, if I went like this, you wouldn't have got. Oh, I guess yeah, I went like. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess. guess. Oh, I guess. Oh. Okay. okay. Yeah, float plane and all the all the toys and yeah, that would be the ultimate five year plan. Um, right now we're thinking more short term with COVID and um, what's going to happen next is we're just dying to go on a road trip. 
it's been 2020 we did our last big road trip trying to do at least one a year 2021 the road trip's going to be coming up after we can get vaccinated so everything relies on that and uh, after we get vaccinated number one is to go see mom so road trip to vancouver island go see mom hug her kiss her you know smother everything we can possibly do excellent and uh from there i'm not sure if our road trip will continue or we'll plan a later road trip because we're thinking uh you know of going uh going east yep anyways I, here, reveal. I think another important thing too is uh i really think with these national awards and the international recognition and winning the bc award for the best damn marketing community marketing uh program and training in <clears throat> the nation um i really think uh which one of you guys out there get us to come to your province or your region and we get to duplicate because we're we've got uh three more communities coming on um it's going to go and we really want to uh work with a whole bunch of regions and we're going to build a huge nationwide family of travel yes. and tourism gurus and enthusiasts um i think we're going to go where uh the big program takes us and um if you want we're, we're ready we want to come we want to build some provinces and territories and some regions and uh and some communities so get a hold of us and let's plan it because uh it's happening i'm all in i mean yep. a war and waiting program that's um proven statistically proven proven in every way which and form and uh need to expand and uh mm -hmm. love to do a region a province a mm -hmm. territory perhaps yep. i i uh-huh uh-huh i want to do uh -huh. it cliff moore says put comox on your list get comox cliff we're in we'll be there we'll come and do the whole north middle island uh get your people there to get a hold of us and let's talk uh let's talk bringing the courtney out there i'd love to come there we actually cliff yeah. just so you know we did a stint in courtney we lived there uh what was that place called black something wasn't it black creek black creek we left black creek we also did a stint uh when we came back uh in the summers to visit with mom we also did a summer stint at saratoga beach so uh that we love nice. that area beautiful area cliff so put the ball in motion and uh we could talk and we'd love to come back and uh and hang with you and uh i believe clip does a fishing charter so hey man i'm all in and i know you are junior oh yeah saratoga beach i loved it last time and i mean the north island is so amazingly beautiful yep hey you know uh you know what dude um i gotta bring up i just uh, one of the things when they said let's uh let's not have our favorites but there's one adventure <laughs> Do you know which one? Where's one adventure I think we should talk about? Because it's a who. Uh, okay. The Green Gardens in Grossmore National Park in Newfoundland. Yeah, that's definitely one of the uh, more uh, memorable ones. Yep. Yeah. So eight, it was an eight kilometer in going along rock cliffs, hole in the wall, beaches. It was beautiful, stunning. We had a yeah. beautiful, sunny, hot day. Eight Absolutely. kilometers in. Then we were, we're on the beach. Yeah, after the beach, that at the eight kilometer, we said, you know, there's a back end trail that takes you back. It's eight kilometers, maybe ten. Um, mm -hmm. Instead of going back the same way we came in, let's take the loop. Um, and so we started taking the loop, and it ended up being like I don't know how wow. many stairs, call I don't know about the details, the way you uh, you know worded that. I mean, there's oh, a lot on, more. Uh, uh, big brother Patetti, he knows the trail and that it won't be any different going the other way, just a little more, uh, just a different route is all. Yeah. What you didn't mention, or you, you probably didn't know, I mean, for sure, is uh, to get back to the parking lot, we had to up and down hundreds of, hundreds three of mountains. stairs. Three, three mountains, mountains like three fjords mountains. or whatever. Yep, up three mountains and top. three valleys. Almost all the way to the top and then all the way back down to the beach, back up again, three times. That was definitely a grueling hike. Gorgeous yep. and very memorable. And I Woo loved it. Yep. But a little sore the next day. Well, I remember a couple of things. Every time when uh when we got to the top of one, we thought we were near the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, even after the first one, after all these, what I don't can't even count the stairs. What's been five hundred thousand uh, stairs? Yeah, you're going up major footage. 
Well, and you get to the top and it's like it looks like you're at the end and then all of a sudden you get to do look around it turns it goes all the way back down again yeah it must have, like oh. it goes back down and back up but you're only gaining like 500 meters or a thousand meters i mean that's the problem it's yeah. the hard part right it's like yeah boop, boop. yeah and then when we see the park go out there goes junior all of a sudden he's got all his energy and he just takes <laughs> off adrenaline rush man. yeah well right. that parking lot once i realized it was the last climb yeah. I mean, it's there flat after that. And it was just like, yeah, yeah. 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 And so thanks, Ma, for the question. That was super awesome. Our next one is uh, is our fa is another fan uh, that we've come to know and admire. Her name is Cor Carrie Horning. And Carrie asked, Carl, what is the biggest challenge in getting your awesome tourism marketing package to the people who need to change how they currently promote themselves? Wow. Um, say that again. What is the biggest challenge in getting your awesome tourism community marketing package to the people who need to change how they currently promote themselves? Biggest challenge is one is getting the work getting through the front door because uh, mm. tourism doesn't exactly in a lot of cases uh, welcome us. It depends on the association if they're a teamwork one like Tourism Nickel Valley or if they're a protective one. Uh, I think the second thing, too, is people don't understand that uh, the urban models, all the other communities out there, all there is is an urban model. And those cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Ours is not even close to that. Um, and it's also it's you don't need to hire new staff. You don't need to hire anything. We come in, we train you, and then all of it comes into our in-house editing uh, for that. So it's a real easy system to create content and attack and, and promote yourself to target groups. But I think it's the biggest challenge is, one, people understand uh we've got a really good plan too we have a couple grant writers on our team so if your community or your group needs uh needs some money you need to get a hold of us and then we hook you up with the grant writer and then you can get that in and then once we've got that and you're ready to go uh we bring it to your community we set it up we train and you're off to go but the big thing is education carry again 50 years of um going to the well at one spot uh, everything else is hesitant. For some reason, the tourism industry thinks these 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 people have been experts for uh, 50 years, and um, I ain't seen a lot happening in the last two years of where they've really bucked up. But I have seen independents do it all around the world. It's the private tourism that's really coming to the plate with innovation and, and initiative. Uh, so I think that's pretty much it, Carrie. It's uh, and again, it's you guys. Get on your communities, man. It's a cool program. Be part of it. Get ahead of it. Get get a group together. Go to the corporation that the the mill or something. Say, look, we got a program it, it, that it would be great for the community, and you guys could be the big sponsor on it. Get the big wigs in the community. Go get the big corporation, the the, the forestry company. Get two or three of them, and uh, or get your regional associations to do it. Um, there's so many different ways. Gather tent. We got one group that's putting together uh 10 10 businesses so they can um, all put in and then they're they're off to go and they're gonna they're gonna take over the area because that's what this program does is it promotes the people who are part of it and don't forget it's not just one website you actually get three platforms out of it right you so you get you know you get a content marketing blogging platform for the locals and the volunteers and the businesses to promote themselves to talk about the community gets on the first page of google then you've got the website, which is connected to a thousand other communities on acanatravel.com. Yet it does operate as its own entity. And then we teach you on how to do a whole bunch of other type of events and content marketing and also uh, online videos and any of the other things. And that's not it. We've got three other big, huge things coming on board. So we're in. We're, we're in, man. We are so in and we're excited. And uh, get on the horn and, and start working the crowd in your communities. We're uh we have to rely on that and uh word of mouth is getting out there and um we're excited we can't wait to come and see some of you uh who who put the ball in motion Any, anything on that for carrie's question biggest challenge call uh i'm just still i mean you got me i our program is awesome i mean we've worked it and covered the bases and worked with communities to for what they need and what they want and um like you say we keep building we got three new platforms coming on and uh yeah it's amazing if i don't say for myself winning awards the british columbia best um community development program for communities under thirty thousand. Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. okay well, twenty thousand. 
That's important. And, uh, you know, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> what is the biggest challenge in getting your awesome terms of marketing package to the people who need to change how they currently promote themselves? Why? And again, education. Those people got to realize. Education. Those people got to realize, man, the old model doesn't work. Yeah. The playbook's out the window, guys. Start looking out of the box and um, yeah. you know, see what amazing things are out there. You know, there's so many things. Yeah, there's so many things, guys. It's it the, the whole playbook, the old one doesn't work. If you're going to stick to that and you're going to trust your your groups to do that, all the power to you. Uh, mm -hmm. But I can tell you right now, with uh, what we figured out, took 10 years. We researched every small community we could find. We put it all together. We asked questions. We came up with this, and it's winning. So if you want your community and you want it to take off and you want to bring a certain type of group to your community, you want to build a physical inventory of your community, this is the one to do it get a group together and hey man you don't need other associations or whatever get a group together go and recruit the group and you guys run it and take over that area um your business depends on it man if i mean if you, your community or business want to go you gotta you gotta go with what's working yeah we help you build an online uh personality for the whole community and yeah. the region yeah Okay, Carl, uh, is there anything else um, you would like to say before we continue? Because that's it for our questions. Thank you, everyone, for sending them in. Sorry yes. we could only get through to nine. Uh, maybe we'll do this again. You guys scream and shout, kick us, and uh, and bug us, and we will definitely um, and definitely have to do it. So, well, we got to thank, thank everybody for uh, the congrats, all the uh, people sending us congrats on the 50th. and. Our awards, etc. Yeah, wouldn't have done it without you guys. So thanks again. Yeah, I got it. Carrie's just here's a little thing. Carrie sent in questions, and she seems to really want to know who the better cook is between moi and you. <laughs> Depends what you're talk what you're cooking. I think. Okay, I'm the I'm the campfire cook specialist. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And you are what's that dish you make now? That's really good. Chicken pot pie. That's it. Chicken pot Ooh. pie, man. Yeah. Really good. He's a I chicken pot pie, pie man. man. Chicken pot dishes. pie, man. He's a chicken pot pie, man. I think it's a battle who is the barbecue, though. Well, I we're going to have pretty, gonna have. pretty <sighs> a, a uh, type personality thing there. Every guy is barbecue king, right? <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know we might have to have a barbecue off i think a barbecue off you know once we get this COVID off we can have a barbecue off yeah 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 you know i was thinking about all, all our blogs and stuff today from our trip yep and i want to start getting in and, and reading all of them again i mean we got 10 years of stuff there yeah there's like 800 and, of them i uh, think yeah i think it'd be a good idea to start maybe uh releasing uh you know uh i have one been, or two i have been yeah, but start from the beginning. I have been. I took our Yukon ones, I rewrote them, and I put them up on uh, Facebook, and they got great play. From the Yukon? Yeah. But I mean, we start from the beginning of our cross Canada trip. The Yukon was like part of that. Yeah, oh, yeah, but I mean, from day one on progression. I'm talking the Yukon 10 years ago, not six months ago. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. Okay. We didn't start in the Yukon. We don't have any blogs before the Yukon. Oh, okay. Like I say I have to get back and read them, but yeah, I know you've been posting some. I just didn't think they were in yep. order. I haven't been watching them, and I mean, no, anyway. no, that's cool. Yeah, so I went back because you, I'm repurposing them, so to get them redone up for uh, being, you know, nice. Because uh, well, over time you look at them and you can feel the emotion in those blogs. But man, was I a lousy writer! <laughs> I was terrible. It also, uh, helps to keep the content fresh. So yeah, I, I was. I wasn't. Uh, I took a while yeah. to get this uh, blogging award thing going because uh, it wasn't ranked on my first couple. I'll tell you that. I don't know if you're a lousy writer. You were a, a novice writer. I was. I was learning on the fly, people. Yeah, yeah. I'm still, you know, more of a novice level myself. But. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, thank you, Colin, for coming on the show tonight. <laughs> oh, thank you, Greg. Yeah, you've been a great guest. <laughs> okay, uh, well, I'm going to put you in the green room. No, I'm not, but uh, yeah. Well, there's nothing left. We ate all the bannock and poutine, right? That's it. it in there. 
Okay, so we've been posting during this awesome show. That was fun. That was different, eh? That was great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it went by, you know, just talking about stuff. We could talk forever, really, about uh, uh, there's so many adventures. We'll different have to, experiences. Yeah, we'll have to do it. So again, make sure to make sure, make sure uh pont uh we have been posting all the contact information tonight, our Facebook, our Twitter, all that stuff. And uh, our Facebook is our main go-to um, because tourism is basically on Facebook the best. Most businesses are, most travelers are. So if uh, let, get us out, we're just almost at 10,000 followers. We want to be there real quick. So tell your friends, start following us. And if you want us to come to your community, get a hold of us. And if you want to have a really good tourism and travel time, get a hold of us. We're pretty, we're pretty fun. We're, we, we're, pretty good at what we do we're serious and yet tourism is supposed to be fun no matter how serious the topics are you got to keep it keep a smile on your face because that is what travel is about enlightenment okay uh if you operate tourism business register online right now get your free listing start receiving traffic and all our new training videos and all that's coming on board and then make sure to follow our adventures and upcoming events on our website, on our blog, as well as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, and Lincoln. Yeah. If you don't operate a tourism business, if you're a blogger, if yep. you're a photographer, yep. if you're a videographer, if you're an adventure addict, if you just love bird watching in your backyard to the park down the road, <laughs> sign up, share your adventures share your photos share your stories we'd love to hear them yep anyways well i have to say hey call also we have that adventure seeker club going so if you're really serious and you want to hang with me and Colin every month and learn a whole bunch of cool skills and tell a whole bunch of cool stories and be able to tell it all out effort and be able to have fun and tell your story and be part of our adventure club because we're going to basically we're going to work with some elite adventure enthusiasts around this country and we're going to build a amazing website where everyone's going to benefit and these people are going to rock it out with everything pointing back to their association their blog their social media their website whatever they want so thank you everybody for joining us tonight for our live celebration of 50 shows Thank you to our guests, Greg and Colin Gerard. Absolutely amazing. Great conversation. Thank you guys for coming on our show. Thank you, everyone, for sending in your questions. We apologize. We did not get them all. If you want to do this again, you got to bug us, guys. You got to tell us what you want. Um, if you have a guest you want us to go after, then tell us. Um, we'll go from there. We are the Cobra hosts of the A Travel Talk Show, Greg and Colin Gerard, the Brothers of Tourism, Crobo founders of the ACANTravel.com, and the brains of Braun behind the ACAN marketing room. Tomorrow. You'll find this interview on all our social media website. Uh, we encourage all Canadians to reuse, recycle, rewatch this talk show every Tuesday at 7 p.m. PST on Facebook and YouTube channels. It is important we recycle good Canadian, cannot fill 100% maple leaf content. And remember, Canada, book and plan your staycations and domestic travel plans locally. Plan with us. Support Canada, support our businesses, go directly, save money, don't send it out of the country. And remember the 13, 18% of those commission dollars go out with every booking you do with the corporates. Make sure you keep it local, help our businesses, help our communities. And you're, every time you're booking that way, you are giving them 18% back into their pocket and God knows we need it. Right, Carl? Touche, yes. So, peace out, Canada. So, Junior, you're gonna dazzle yeah. them. You're gonna dazzle them for a bit, or what? Uh next week. Yeah. Next week, I gotta. Well, who we got next week? Let me take a look. I'm a little. You know, you're so excited. Give me you know? a sec. I'm so excited. So many papers oh. here now. Wow. That's well, beautiful. you're gonna have to take it over, bro. I mean, okay, you know, I'll take gotta... it over. You, you go just ahead and announce move your mouth. Week. Move your mouth. Glenn, April twentieth, uh, April twentieth, yeah. the fifty-first show. Glenn Stewart. Glenn is a world-renowned horseman, yeah. trainer, and educator. Glenn Stewart has over thirty years of horsemanship experience with over three thousand horses. This guy's story is pretty cool. If you're a cowboy-loving, cowboy-hopping, bushwhacking, wildlife trail riding guru, guru. You come on because uh, Glenn Stewart will be here. He is a dedicated horseman helping people and horses build knowledge and confidence. Visit Glenn at www.thehorseranch.com if you want to check it out. Thank you, everybody. 
take care and enjoy.